back, y'all, for tuning back in. It's your boy, Pelican Bay Canines, giving you that dog news the way I always do. Fair enough, by you. Some gonna like it. Some ain't hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here and hit them comments up. Let's get into that dog news. Now, I hope everybody having a good day today. We're gonna start this off today by starting while I forgot and left something off the last video. We're gonna start this off today because I wanted to get this point across as well. One thing I seen, I see, you know, I see, I look on Facebook and it's the same old red, same old bullshit, you know, same old stuff. But uh, what I seen was somebody selling puppies, which is cool. But then five minutes later, you know, they're advertising their puppies for sale. But then five minutes later, they on Facebook saying, uh, talking about a match, talking about hooking. My brother who wrote that post, my brothers who write posts like this, don't you know you are one officer looking at your Facebook post, deciding he want to buy a dog from you away from getting busted. You are one officer looking at your Facebook post and this decide you big enough fish to get. Go ahead and get them. Because the moment you sell, the moment you get up here and talk about fighting, is the moment you, bro you break illegal ground. The moment you swimming with the sharks. You know what I'm saying? You swimming with the sharks now. You wanna be a big boy? You swimming with the sharks. You know, things happen as well as common sense. You know, we all should have it, but for some reason, the reputation we get from Facebook is more important than the charges you're going to get from that man putting one and two together. Like, I don't know, uh, you know, being a man on Facebook must got a hell of a, you know, a hell of a feeling behind it in order for you to get up here and try to sell puppies then turn around in the same day on the same message board, turn around talking about fighting? What grade did a lot of y'all brothers graduate in? Did you pay attention in class? Was you listening? Was you in detention every day? See, when I see doggers like this, whether it's male or female, when I see doggers that make moves like this, I know you don't give a damn about me because you don't give a damn about yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't give a damn about yourself. You know, and I don't want to hear how much money you're making in the streets. I want to hear the kind of gangster moves you're making, what kind of these moves you're making, when you, you, you're playing out clear on Facebook making dummy moves. You know what I'm saying? Making dummy moves. So how can I respect anything else about your game, about your gangster, about your manhood, about anything when you're conducting yourself in the public like a jackass? Then, you know, then I see another brother make a post and like I said, I'm not talking no names. If you seen the post, you seen the post. One brother put a post up of a scarred up dog, a female dog, real scarred up, and said, just posting a picture to show a dog that loves her work. Okay? Now, looking at that picture, I can't tell if that dog got an ass whoop or if she won. So what was the purpose of posting that picture? Them scratches don't mean she loves her work. Them scratches might mean she jumped the box. Them scratches might mean you you taking a picture of a, a five-minute curve. So them scratches don't tell me nothing that she love work. Them scratches is tell them folk that you love doing dumb shit, that you love to be ignorant, that you love to be stupid, you know, because that's what it is, being stupid, you know. Uh, those scratches tell nothing. Those scratches do nothing but make the people on your board hot because of the fact that you making this board look like a, a, a dog fighting board you know instead of a, a, of a dog showing board a, um, a board to, just to get your stuff out to show people what lines you work in what, what kind of great dogs you got you know uh, we got to smart enough on when it comes to certain things because you know um it just looking like we born yesterday and came off the porch yesterday. Like y'all, a lot of y'all dog men looking like y'all born yesterday and came straight off the porch talking about dogs. You know what I'm saying? Just talking about dogs. Don't care. 
who you get in trouble, yourself, anybody else. Don't care if you doing something because and, and, and if you can't see that a lot of folks' troubles trickle down to the next man who ain't involved in all that, why would you get on Facebook and do that if you know you could bring trouble to somebody else? But let's get on to these pairs. Let's get on to these pairs. First up, we got Steelheads Chicana. Steelheads Chicana. I love how this dog look. Um, great looking dog. You know, just want to break the pair down to see what she she's bred like. Uh, and when we do the pair breakdown, if you look at it, she's coming down off of uh, Sammy the Sammy Arab or Raging Bulls Red, Red Man. Sammy the Arab or Raging Bulls Red Man. On the top side and on the bottom of the third, she's Tance Travis. You know, Tance Travis on the bottom of the third. You know, and uh, um, the Raging Bull Red Man dog is coming down off of uh, Schoolboy's Big Red, top of the fourth. Top of the fourth, Schoolboy's Big Red. Bred to a, a pure or heavy Jeep dog. That school Schoolboy Red bred to a heavy Jeep or pure Jeep, however you want to call it, I would say heavy, to get Raging Bulls Red Man. If you look at the pair, the dog was pretty much Red Boy, Jocko, Jeep, Rascal, Carver, and got a little dab of Chinaman in there. You know, um, Red Boy, Red Boy, Jocko, Jeep, Rascal. When you look at the pair, and this is a great looking dog, the, um, Genetic shows in the dog. You can see, you can see genetics in the dog. Um, you know, I can't too much say anything else about it. This dog performs on all levels, in the field and in the um, you know, in the shows. Uh, great dog. Now, out of all the dogs I named, and just my personal experiences dealing with certain dogs in the past, I must say she looked like you know the genetics of the Jeep dogs really took over in her. She looked almost exactly like the uh, Al's Brutes dogs I had back in the days. Came off Al Brute, and the Brute dog came off of, you know, coming down off the Jeep stuff. But, uh, yeah, great looking dog, man. We're going to move on to the second dog. St. Benedict's Bailey. St. Benedict's Bailey, which is a son of White's Tail bred to St. Benedict's Isis. Son of White's Tail bred to St. Benedict's Isis. And in the second generation, you got Jeep on top, and you got Long's Widow on the bottom in the second generation. You know, um, you got about an eighth of the Midnight Cowboy stuff. Now, if you look at this pedigree, because I'm not going to click every single thing on it. I'm going to leave that for y'all to go back and, you know, have your fun and look at it. But if you click on pretty much most of these dogs in the fourth pedigree, they're coming down off Bully Son. This is a heavy bred Bully Son Jeep Red Boy dog, you know, and the Jeep stuff, you know, still goes back to Bully Son. Jeep Red Boy dog, you know, with a tad, a little tab or something else in it, you know, but uh, heavy, heavy Jeep, heavy, heavy Bully Son, you know, can't be one without the other. Well, you can be Bully Son without the Jeep, but you can't be Jeep without the Bully Son. Now, I'm going to just show you how the genetics trickle down. Two phenomenal looking dogs coming down off the St. Benedict's Bailey stuff. St. Benedict's T-Bone. St. Benedict's Ruka. T-Bone and Ruka. Two phenomenal looking dogs, both showing the traits of their ancestors. And, you know, that's, what, that's how you want to do it when you breed it. You want... Dogs that remind you of the dogs that you bred. I should be able to look at your dog if it's coming down off so-and-so dog, uh, if it's coming down off Davis Boomerang, and you know it's pretty much heavy bred that, then I should be able to look at that dog if I'm if I'm from that era and be like, oh yeah, that look like a um, look like a boomerang dog. Or it look like this, it look like that. You know, and looking at these two dogs right here, you know, I can see what they look like. The, the Bailey dog. And you know, uh, like I say, genetics genetics don't lie. Now the third dog we're going to look at is Panero's. No, I said it wrong. Hold up. Pinaleros. Pinaleros Achilles. Pinaleros Achilles. 
And I hope I said it right that time. Pinaletta Rose Achilles. We're going to check this dog pedigree out. Great looking, phenomenal looking dog. Now, when it comes to Achilles, we're looking at a beautiful black dog. Bred great. Okay, now, if we look in this fourth, this is a, this is a, a product of looking in the fourth generation. Okay, we see some great dogs. Okay, the thing about it is, we, it, the, if you look in the fourth generation, it kind of looks like some inbreeding, some line breeding is being done from that point on. But behind that is, you know, some scattered bred dogs. This is a, a situation where you take scattered bred dogs and turn it line bred. You know, uh, it's not super tight line bred or nothing like that. But if you go back into all the pedigrees, you see a Nigarino, Jeep, Otis, Honey Bunch, some Carver stuff, you know, and a couple other different lines but as it gets closer to you know the fourth generation and after the fourth generation they did more of a line breeding you know uh program seems like and uh the dog got some great great dogs in his pedigree i'm not gonna lie to you and i'm quite sure this dog right here is a a, a good healthy dog because it's not too tight, too tightly inbred. Quite sure it's all healthy puppies. You know, because the way it's bred, that's one great thing about having a dog that's not the same dog in every line of the pedigree. You get a whole lot more healthier dog, whole lot, you know, can take all them them, them little diseases when they're young. Because we always talking about why them, them mixed breed mutts never die when they puppies. No shots, no worm, no nothing. They never die when they puppies. Is because their gene pool is just so big. Big gene pool. They don't have their immune system is a whole lot stronger than your average pit bull. And I never could figure that out until I actually understood what it was. Why my pits die so easy and why these mixed breed dogs can live in the woods, live under a shed, in the cold, in the summertime. No, no food, no water. The mama dog get the food and the water. She 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 feed them. You it might be a stray that nobody feed them. And that dog survived with them puppies under the house the whole time with nobody feeding him, getting his own food. But we got a dog we feeding two times, three times a day and can't get the puppies to live. Just the inbreeding traits, man. Just the inbreeding traits that makes the immune system a whole lot weaker. And this dog here, you know, like I said, is bred great. Got a bunch of great dogs in it. And, you know, I'm quite sure that uh, he's throwing off great dogs himself. But just check the pedigree out. Achilles is the product of Nigarino, G, Otis, Honey Bunch, some Carver stuff. A bunch of phenomenal dogs in the background and the pedigrees. So you know it's all going to come to a head when the genetics click together. It's all coming to a head and it gives you phenomenal dog Achilles that we're looking at right now on the screen. Now what we can't forget, we got to keep it in mind. We got to always keep this in mind. When we say, oh, uh, that's a pure Pelican Bay dog. Or, oh, that's a pure um, Garner dog. Or, that's a pure Mr. Boudreaux dog. Excuse me. That's a pure Mr. Boudreaux dog. Okay. The thing is, we got to remember, and when we're saying this, we're using the bloodlines in different ways. You know what I'm saying? Because a pure Garner dog is not the same thing as a pure Frisco dog. Pure Garner dog just means that Garner name is in your pedigree all the way through. Pure Frisco means that dog is pure Frisco, no matter who name is in it. You know, no matter who name is in it, it's pure Frisco, but a pure Garner dog might not even be Frisco dog. And we, we you know, we, we, we're quick to say, uh, oh, I got a pure Garner, this is pure Garner, Red Boy and Garner stuff. Uh, uh, a pure Boudreaux dog is not the same thing as a pure Floyd dog. You know, when he, when he, when when camps and kennels make their kennel recognized, we 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 sometimes use the kennel names as bloodlines, like a pure Walker Mall dog. Don't mean it's pure um, a Rattler. Don't mean it's pure uh, Little Thunder. Don't mean it's pure Big Country or Big Giant or Little Giant. It just means it's pure of that kennel. You know, now it goes back to seeing what lines does that kennel run. You know, because some kennels run multiple lines, some kennels run one. So that's when you have to, you know, pay attention to that part. It might be 
It might have this brother whole name in the pedigree, but his yard consists of about 10 different bloodlines. So when you're looking at it like it's a pure Mr. Johnson dog, but yeah, Mr. Johnson didn't have one, two of the same bloodlines on his yard. So you got a scattered bread dog, but it's a pure Mr. Johnson dog, but it's scattered bread. You know what I'm saying? So it's a difference between a pure tats dog and a pure yellow dog. I mean, if that's, if that's the only dog that Tant ran was yellow, then there's no difference. But if he had other dogs that came down with his name with, with, that wasn't off yellow, then you know that's the difference. Now this dog, Seeger Sniper, I looked in the pedigree and if you look back in the fourth generation, you know, and you click on the fourth and go back to the next, this dog here is balls down, you know, coming down off the, uh, at the top, coming down off the Hollins Cherokee Chief, bred the Dirty Mary. Um, and you can go back into all the pedigrees, you're gonna pretty much see Dirty Mary here. You're gonna see boat action. You got the great boat action in there. Um, you know, a bunch of phenomenal balls dogs. And you know, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. If I say I got a pure balls dog, does that mean it's pure Dirty Mary? You know, and whoever the male she dealt with, or does balls have different strains of dogs that's coming on his yard that's not coming off Dirty Mary? And I'm, you know, I, I know Dirty Mary was like the foundation stock, but uh, his name carries other dogs outside of Dirty Mary, even though he might not be famous for the other dogs, you know, but. His name does carry dogs that don't go back to Bloody Mary, you know, in their pedigree. So we just got to, you know, uh, listen to how we say, oh, I got a pure this kind of dog and a pure that dog. You know, it's better off saying I got a pure Chinaman dog than a pure Garner dog. You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, uh, you know, it's better to use the names instead of the breeders. You know, especially right now, uh, since going to, um, you know, producing a red boy dogs as well, you know, a pure Garner dog back in the days would have been thought of as a Chinaman dog. But, you know, we can't say now pure Garner dog might be Garner's, um, you know, the red man stuff. It might not have no Chinaman stuff in it. And it's a pure Garner dog still, you know. Um, so don't forget my brothers and my sisters. And some of my brothers that run these message boards, like I said, sometimes tap, tap a dude on the shoulder and be like, yo, you got to chill with that, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it not only makes him hot, but it makes your board, you know, seem a certain way. I'm telling you, because it's just common sense. It don't take a rocket scientist. It don't take somebody who graduated high school. It don't take, like I said, I'm not the brightest star. It don't take the brightest star in the galaxy to, to see when you advertise your pit bull for sale and then the same person turn around, talk about fighting him, talk about he got the best this and that when it comes to fighting, bruh, you can't blame nobody, nothing for you being behind bars but yourself. All any man that's working with uh, in for, law enforcement has to do from this point on, once he see your post, is call you, buy one of them puppies from you. The moment you sell one of them duct tape ear puppies, boom, you made yourself play. You played yourself. You know, and then you want to blame it on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? If I see it, you don't think the next man see it, and the next man see it, and this man see it. Hey, it is what it is, though. You know, like I say, um, we got uh, so many different minds and ways of thinking out here in this dog world today that we cannot blame the foolishness that another man does on the dog, no, the dog man he bought his dog from. It can't go like that. It's too much foolishness out here. You know what I'm saying? I can go buy guns. I can go buy guns. I can walk out the gun store and, and, and say, oh, um, 
you know, say what I want to say, but long as I don't commit no crime with that. They can't lock that gun store man up for selling me a gun if he sold it to me legal. If he sold it to me legally, they can't do nothing to him. But yeah, I'm finding that these pit bulls may be, because I'm going to do the research. These pit bulls may be the only thing on this soil, the only living thing on this soil, the only object, period, on this soil that a man can be locked up for it from what another man do that he barely even know. Really don't even know. He just, you know, contacted him through the cell. Don't even know him. It's the only object in this country that's on this soul. I can sell you anything. You know what I'm saying? And if you go out there and do something with it, it has nothing to do with me. Nothing at all. Period. You know what I'm saying? Besides the American pit bull team, one thing on this country, one thing in this country, like I say, I'm going to do a little more research because I'm starting to see, like, when you put any scenario in place, it does not involve the man who sold the thing, unless you're talking about drugs. That's the only thing, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about anything sold legally to a person. Once they leave your, your, your from your property, your whatever, you your business, there's no way you can be held reliable for it. There's no way. If they start telling people you're held reliable for the bank robberies these guys go ahead and do, the killings these guys go ahead and do, and this stuff these guys go ahead and do after they buy these guns from your shop, you see how many um, gun shops going to close down. They're not going to sell nobody no guns besides their family members. You know, it's like it can't be and only way it's happening like that because nobody stood up for it for in the beginning and let it get too bad and let it get to the point and now the brothers that's trying to stand up and fight for it now, it's got like a whole boatload of shit on your head. You know what I'm saying? Because the people before us didn't stand up and fight for it. So we left with all that. You know, we left with the, 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 the Peter stealing dogs and all that type of stuff. You know, if, if people would have stood up and fought for it in the limelight, you know, uh, back in them days when people was getting dead wrong instead of saying, you know, uh, I'm just going to bow down and, you know, and let them do what they got to do on me, then we wouldn't be having it so hard today that we have it. My dog man, my young brothers, when a dog man don't know you, like, and he's not honest with his dog game, he'll try to get over on you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember, you know, meeting dog men and telling me, oh, I got a, a welcome off female for you over here. And you know what I'm saying? Not knowing how, you know, I run with that line, whether I had dogs or not. Not knowing how I run with the line, but then lying to me, trying to sell me, you know, a white cow patch dog, which I know uh, that line of dog does throw off, you know, a cow patch dog, you know, time to time. But this particular dog wasn't a welcome out dog, and I knew it already, but I just went ahead along with the program. You know what I'm saying? Because you see how dog men only want to keep it real when it comes to themselves. You know what I'm saying? Keep it real with me. But don't keep it, they don't want to keep it real with you, you know, at the end of the day. And like I said, you can't say you got a, this kind of dog and you only got that dog in your pedigree one time in the eighth generation. I done heard that too many times. You get somewhere, you get somewhere. Oh, this a welcome out. This a walk. That dog ain't got no welcome out in it. Folks just using the name, uh, Trying to, uh, you know, just using a name. Trying to make their dog seem like what it ain't. When the dog might be a great dog, just run off your dog name. You know, and I find that, I find people doing that a lot with no papers. You know, uh, just take giving their dog a blood. You know, giving the dog a bloodline. Now, don't get me wrong. Papers don't mean a dang old thing. But don't get me wrong. 
papers mean a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Mean a whole lot. Because like I said before, the pit bull is the only dog in this country, you know, that generational and backgrounds are kept up the way they kept up. I'm talking about every single dog matter on back to the early 1900s when it comes to the pit bulls. Any other breed, folks don't keep up with the pedigrees the way the pit bull community keep up with their pedigrees. You know, they know everything about every dog in their pedigrees, the pit bull community. Every other dog, you know, it just what lines is, you know, what whatever this is or whatever that is. They don't know. It's, it's a full-blooded poodle, but who keeps, you know, who kept track of every poodle name? Maybe that one, one particular breeder did, you know, but the other people across the masses did. And all they care about is they got AKC Russia Poodle. You know what I'm saying? But the people with the ADBA um, um, pit bull register dogs, they all pay attention to their pedigrees. They go back to this dog, check this dog, that dog, this dog. You know, pit bull is one of the most sophisticated dogs on this land when it comes to, you know, the breakdown of it. You know, uh, they all got the same set of standards but at the end of the day, each dog brings something different to the table. Yeah, when it comes to me, I'm a first-generational dog, man, like I told y'all before. But one thing I was blessed on having, and and I, I, I was blessed to jump when I jumped in the game, to jump with, you know, the Knights of the Round Table. You know what I'm saying? And, and the thing is, like I say, um, my, my granddaddy was a, 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 a military vet. POW in the Korean War got a purple heart. My brother fought in the Afghan and Iraq War multiple tours. Um, you know, and he got awards for that. I tried the military, it didn't work for me. I tried to get in the Marines. I got my high I was kicked out of high school, public high school, you know, in my my, my 12th grade year. I got my diploma from a private high school. Alright? When I was joining the Marines. The, 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 the um, commander or whoever came down and he, he 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 didn't approve of the school I got my diploma from. He said, you know, it was equivalent to having a GED. Okay? It was no problem. He said I couldn't come in at that time. Okay? I done went, and this is after I done been in the dope game. You know what I'm saying? Shit was getting hot. My, my partners was going to jail. I said, man, forget this. I'm 29 years old. You know what I'm saying? I try to join. I got pulled over. I done passed all my waivers. You know, I, I done failed drug tests after drug tests to the point where I just stopped smoking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, popping them, popping them E's, uh, going in there, taking them, uh, them $20 drinks to try to clean your system. You know what I'm saying? None of that working. Every time I go down to the recruiting office, I fail the test. Every time I go down and try to take a, a, a gallon of water, this and that, I fail the test. Fail the test until I just got to the point where Half the year done went by, and I just said, man, forget it. I'm just going to stop and, and pass the test. So I, I stopped. I passed the test. Then when I get on the shuttle bus to go down to Columbia, which would have been my MEPS center, you know, Columbia, South Carolina. I think I want to say it was Fort Jackson. Um, on the way there, I'm out, out of Conway already on the bus. I done researched, researched, and researched. I'm talking about all these months I've been trying to do this. I'm ready to go now. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to go. I'm on the bus. I'm gone. They pull the bus over. They say the, uh, you know, the commander didn't approve of my school. You know what I'm saying? But they can take me to the Army recruiting you know, office, and I'll be good. I can go straight into the Army, and you know everything will be fine. You know what, man? I was so disappointed. So disappointed when that happened. Like, that crushed me. You know what I'm saying? Because it was something I was really trying to do at that time. I put everything into it. I was running the, the, the um, you know, the the physical fitness test. I did all of them. I ran the, the, the two miles, I think it is, two miles in a certain amount of minutes or three miles in a certain amount of minutes. I forgot what how much it was, but I was under 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, like, I was so disappointed when I got back to the house. Like, I just said, forget the Army. I ain't going in it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to go in the Army when I, you know, when I was going in. I wanted to go in the Marines. So, I was so disappointed. I just... Like, gave up on that dream. You know what I'm saying? Gave up on that. But in actuality, all I had to do was go in the Army and transfer if I wanted to. If I was been thinking. See, we make decisions without thinking sometimes. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, even when it comes to these dogs, if I would have been thinking, I could have went in the army, did my, uh, went in and just transferred how I do it. But even if I wouldn't have transferred, I might be able to liked it. And, you know, did my little five years at the most, I mean, at the least, and, you know, came back home. And I still could have been giving y'all this dog talk that I'm giving y'all today, you know? But I would have put myself in a better situation, you know, a better a predicament, rather. So when you got goals and dreams and it don't happen on that first, you know, when you put all your all into it and it don't happen, don't give up on it. You know, uh, keep going. You know what I'm saying? Keep going because, like I said, this channel is about me telling mistakes that I made so the young folk won't make the same mistakes I made. You don't gotta make the same, you don't gotta make a mistake to learn from it. You can learn from somebody else's mistake. You know what I'm saying? Learn from somebody else on and keep it pushing. You know, keep it pushing. Cause like I say, um, it, that you know, it didn't work, but it was what it was. I made the best out of it from there. You know, and I went back to the streets from there and start doing my thing. But at the end of the day, man, if you gotta go, go for it. If it don't work when you get there, if it didn't work. That don't mean you're a failure. It means you just got to go by a different route. Take a different road to get there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't go too far back to find that road. You know what I'm saying? Just take a step back and then boom, hit another direction to get to it. And that's all it's going to take at the end of the day. You know, and, that, and we can put that towards anything when it comes to goals-wise. It don't make no difference what the goal is. You know, a uh, goal is a goal. It don't make no difference what it is. And to all the cheaters out there, man, to all the cheaters out there, y'all ain't hitting no shit. You know what I'm saying? All right, just like the brother roster man said, you know, back in them days, it was about the competition. It was about seeing who could prepare the best. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's something you don't do when you, like, you know, no, not knocking, like he said, not knocking nobody who get other people to condition their dogs and, and get their dogs in shape. But that's the whole point of, the, the, the game is to see who can prepare the best, see who can be the best warrior. You know, uh, uh, it's a whole different feeling that you get inside from you preparing for that contest, from your dog getting prepared for that contest, and you showing up with that dog showed up. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different feeling. You know, and I'm not saying uh, one dog man is better than the other one, but I'm just saying it's a whole different feeling from you preparing for battle, then you know your dog over there getting prepared for battle. Because at the end of the day, all you is is hopes, hoping that he keep condition right, hoping he do what he's supposed to do, hoping he do this and hoping he do that. Because then if he already a winner already, now if he already say a two or three timer, and then he get out there and lose, you're going to put it on the key. Oh, he ain't conditioned him right. He ain't do this right. Well, you should have did it your damn self. You should have did it your damn self. And then you won't have nothing to worry about, you know, because we leave all that part of the dog game out. The dog man calling each other dog man. We leave all that part out. Can you prepare for battle back in them days? You know what I'm saying? Could you prepare for battle? Because that's what it's all about. He, oh, yeah, if you see me on the streets and it go down, you you get the best of me. But, no, we preparing for battle. We, we taking two months of our time exercising, eating right, sleeping right, Lifting, lifting right, uh, doing everything we gotta do to simulate this battle that we about to go into. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and we, we get there, we get there together. When we go in, we go in together. When we leave, we leave together. And that's how it go. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's a it's just a different it's a different feeling, man. When you when you uh you know take your time out with it then, you know, just passing it over. And it's less less room for excuses, less room for error. You know, if it's going to be an error, it's on your part because you conditioned your own dog and went out there. It ain't nobody else to blame for it, you know. And if you condition your own dog, nine times out of ten, you going to handle your own dog. You know why? Because you want to make sure, because you know that y'all got that bond together. Him and that other brother over there, he might be a good handler, but him and that other brother that don't got that bond together. And after them, that, that that training time that you put in with him, that blood, sweat, and tears that you put in with him, you're going to want to make sure that you go to the finish with him. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be in your heart. 
It's a different feeling, man. It's a different feeling than when you're going to a show, compete, competing in a confirmation show, and you getting your dog right, then somebody else giving you your dog back, and he looking all good and in his shape. You, you get him back, but you don't win no ribbons or no trophies from it. And, and everybody who winning, best in shape, best this, best that. Then you're going to blame it on the man who conditioned the dog. Work your own dog. You know what I'm saying? If you don't got time to work it, then you ain't got time to, to be up in it. Everybody ain't got time to be up in it right now, but they're forcing themselves to be. You know? You can't force yourself to be a dog, man. You just got to let it flow. Just let it flow. But I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. I ain't going to keep y'all here too long. Hope everybody having a great day or had a great day. Um, y'all stay safe out there. Keep bulldogging. Stay legal out there like I always tell you. Keep them dogs fed and, and watered up. Keep them dogs looking good. Y'all have a great day. PBK9s and I'm out.